Hello and welcome to this third video in the Excel for Analytics project series where we are going to be doing some data exploration and analytics as we begin the process of figuring out what it is that we want to present to our stakeholders and that's all coming up right now. You just got to analyze stuff. Okay, thing number one before we get started, if you're just now jumping into this Excel for Analytics project series right now, First off, welcome. My name is Matt Bratton. I'm the founder of tmbanalytics.com, your analytics career headquarters. And second, I would very strongly encourage you to go check out the first two videos in this series where I go over how to download the raw source file. I provide a bunch of Excel shortcuts, tips and tricks, and then walk through the cleaning process of the source file, bringing us to this point right now where we are about to pick up where we left off in video number two and start analyzing this freshly cleaned and beautiful data file. All right, if you've got the file ready to go, I do invite you to go ahead and get that thing fired up and let's get to analyzing stuff. Okay, actually, you know what? Before we do that, zoom out, zoom out for a second. Come back here, come back here, home base. Okay, uh, I've got a confession. I've got something that I feel like I need to say. And what I need to say is I've actually done three separate dry runs of what you're about to watch about this analytical process okay and over the course of that my intention was that i was going to document my process my analytical process on this through repetition figure out the high points the things that that are are you know smart to poke at smart to do this and that and i realized that one of my big, biggest personal gripes when it comes to analytics instruction is that it's very sterile. It's very fenced in and, and prescriptive almost. And there's a saying that I like, which is uh, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. I am not in the business of conducting malpractice, okay? I want to acknowledge that analytics is kind of by virtue of just what it is, not really a structured thing. It's a little bit amorphous, it's non-linear, okay? And there's great things about that, but there's also challenges associated with it. So I think a lot of the common uh, schools of thought are that people like to give very clean environments, clean sandboxes, clean examples, things that you can go in and go, okay, step number one, step number two, step number three, and here is your picture perfect analysis, right? I don't wanna do that. I, that's, that's not how I wanna operate things because that's not the real world. Maybe that's a good approach if you're trying to learn a specific technical skill or home in on how to execute certain things specifically, but the reality around doing an ad hoc analysis, which a lot of analytical requests are, is that you don't always have that direction. You don't always know like, okay, this is exactly the order of operations I'm gonna go in. It's curiosity. It is allowing yourself to be curious. This is where it gets fun, okay? This is, if you're if you're truly an, an analyst, a budding analyst, this is where you should get excited, right? You get to, you still get to use your tools, you still get to use your skills, your technical skills, but you get to use them in a way that advances your thought process. It advances your, your curiosity it takes that curiosity and, and exposes what's behind it, right? You get to poke at things a different way. You get to think about things and look about, look at things a different way. And, and you ask questions and you get to get immediate response, right? So I'm getting fired up because I'm just thinking about how we're going to attack this thing right now. And so I just, I wanted to put that out there that before we jump into this, I want you to be aware that this isn't going to be a step one, step two, step three situation. Okay. And I hope you're comfortable with that. What it's actually gonna be is you watching me, someone who's been an analyst since 2004, struggling a little bit, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna paint, put the, the Instagram filter over this whole thing. This is gonna be like real. Even though the situation is fake, even though it's completely fictitious situation, I'm still gonna treat it like a real situation. And you're gonna get to see sort of like the raw me fumbling around. I'm probably gonna forget how to do things. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect, but that's okay because it's realistic, 
all right so i want you to experience that so before you watch this whole thing i would encourage you actually if you haven't done it already if you followed along with the cleaning process you have the file at you're ready you can go ahead and pause the video and try to answer this question on your own go through your own process go through your thinking go go ask your questions poke around come up with some answers on your own and then come back and and watch this and see what i do and Maybe you did things differently. You probably did things differently. Do you feel like you did it a better way than I did? Do you feel like you did it ways that you're like, oh crap, I should have done it the way that I did it? I don't know, but that's part of the fun. That's how we get better too, is by seeing how other people work and you learn through that visibility, through seeing how other people think about stuff and you can incorporate those tools. Those are the tools that people don't talk about is, is the thought process and in the line of questioning and the way that people um, navigate through a, a question like this, okay? So I am being intentional, I am being transparent that this is not necessarily gonna be super clean to follow. I hope it's gonna be fun though. I'm gonna try to be as engaging as possible. I'm gonna be speaking about my thought process. I'm gonna be sharing you know, what's going through my mind and then to the extent that it makes sense, I'll be explaining what I'm hitting, the keystrokes, all that fun stuff. So uh, I think that's what I wanted to get off of my chest. So full full disclosure, um, this isn't going to be a one, two, three. Uh, I encourage you to take your own stab at this and then come and, and enjoy the ride with me while we take this thing and, and get an answer to our stakeholders. All right. All right. Let's go back in back to the file. All right. So where are we at? It's always prudent when you reach a, a, a point like this. So we've done the cleaning, we've got our file back open, and we're looking at it. We're about to embark on a new process, a new step in this process. I'm gonna save a new new version of this file just to commemorate it. So I'm gonna go file, save as, we're gonna call this our V2, which means that now, if we muck something up, we can go back to our V1, see what we had, if we need to do any reversions, if we just need to delete this version altogether, doesn't matter, but we're we're safe now. We have that that saved. Um, I started a funny string on LinkedIn, which, by the way, if you're not following me on LinkedIn, you should. Uh, I'm pretty active on there as well, and I'd love to be connected with as many individuals uh, who are interested in analytics as possible. So, anyway, I started a, a string talking about version control, and it provoked a lot of wonderful discussions, debates, and and made some people uncomfortable. And I thought it was wonderful. So, anyway, that's just a little aside, but. I do like to save on my local machine specific versions uh, in numeric order that I can track. So we're on a version two now. This is where the analysis begins. Uh, it is also a good practice to frequently revisit the request. And I do that as a means of making sure that I'm not spiraling out of control or going into analysis paralysis or going off on a tangent on something that's not value add or germane to what I'm looking into. So let's read it. The board is asking to see how volume looked in Q2. I, your manager, got some data, which is attached, which is actually this whole file, uh, but didn't have a chance to pull anything together and was hoping you could take a stab at it. I think they just want to see Q2 2021 volume by region and wanted to know if everything was looking good. Okay. All the other stuff has to do with just like the data wrangling that we did, the data cleaning that we did, getting the file ready to go. So, okay, really the punchline here is we need to let them know how are things looking volume wise by region for Q2? I think we can do that. I think we have the information to do that. So let's go back here and revisit. Before I closed it last time at the end of the, the previous video, I opened up these just as a reference to see like, hey, we started here, we ended up here, started here, we ended up here. Uh, I don't need these tabs visible right now. They're also not heavyweight enough that I wanna delete them. They're not linking to anything. It wouldn't disrupt anything if I did do that but whatever, I'm just gonna hide them, okay, goodbye. Uh, the Geo tab, this is this is pretty much just an index at this point. It doesn't have any data that we need. I'm not gonna hide it because I may wanna come back here and look at something. Um, like for example, 53 clients, just as a reminder, we've got 53 clients, four regions. Okay, fine, um, so that's there. I'm gonna leave it. This is where we've got most of the pertinent information that we are gonna be needing. We're gonna go into territory that that uh, I, I don't like to talk about. And the reason I don't like to talk about it is because 
it's sort of a running joke, at least in my mind. I, nobody probably actually gets it. So it's my own personal inside joke with myself that I hate pivot tables. It's not true. But I like people to think that I hate pivot tables, which is a completely irrational thing. Um, I do have my qualms with it, but I have qualms with a lot of different things. But pivot tables are just... They're, they're inflexible. I think they're lazy if you use it for presentation purposes. That's kind of my thing. I know that there are people who are incredibly talented that can do some fancy things with the formatting of them. And that's great. I can do that too. I just don't like to. I like to have the flexibility and do most of my presentation layer stuff formula based. And uh, it may have a pivot table as the engine. But in general, I use pivot tables for quick slicing and dicing. And uh, that's pretty much it. So with that... I'm gonna go ahead and slap a pivot table on this bad boy, and we're gonna start kind of pivoting this information and just see what comes out. So in order to do that from anywhere within this data table, I'm gonna hit Alt-N-V, and what did I just do? I'm gonna hit the wrong key. Alt-N-V, there we go, create pivot table, uh, new worksheet, hit OK, and ba-boom. We've got a pivot table, and when you do that, it usually defaults to just putting it on a new sheet. So we've got a sheet one, I'm gonna rename it, Alt H O R, we're gonna call it pivot, enter, okay. If you're watching this and you are not familiar with pivot tables, please, I would strongly encourage you to follow along with this and learn about pivot tables. These are table stakes for analytics type functions, okay? When it comes to Excel, I consider it basically beginner stuff, even though that's more in the world of analytics, or if you're someone who's gonna be spending a lot of time in Excel, you should be familiar with pivot tables, okay? They're very intuitive, they're, they're, they sound scarier than they really are. If you're not in analytics, um, number one, thanks for watching. I don't know what you're doing here, but cool to have you. Uh, but number two, you may not need these. It's more like you'll impress your friends if you're not in the analytics space, but if you're in analytics, you gotta know how to do this, okay? So a pivot table basically takes your data table and it highlights these are all the fields that exist in that table. And all you have to do is drag these things down to these quadrants here. You can use one as a filter. You can set up your column headers. You can set up your rows. And it basically takes that table and makes it very dynamic where you can start shifting, pivoting all of the information. So what I wanna start with is actually, I want my region name be here so poof you see that APAC EMEA LATAM NAM and then I want my dates to come on the columns now I want to show you something though remember we created these quarter columns right over here we created these so that we would have this cleaner naming convention um, if you drop these in to a pivot table it's gonna put them in alphabetical order by default so you notice we've got Q1 2020 next to Q1 2021, Q2 2020, Q2 2021. If I wanted, I could drag these in order. Uh, but because they're not functioning like dates, I can't like, it doesn't group, it doesn't do a lot of things that I might wanna do. So for purposes of this pivot table, I'm actually not going to use that. I'm going to use my date field, okay. Look at that nasty formatting. Okay, we gotta clean this up already. I'm gonna hit Control A, Control A, Control A, ah. Control A, A. My keyboard is sticking right now. Okay, Alt H uh, W. Remember that wraps or unwraps text. I wanted that to unwrap everything. Alt H O I, that's going to adjust the width, auto fit width for all these things. Click back in the pivot table. Now I wanna bring in my volume and I don't like this formatting. I'm gonna go Alt H K, Alt H9, Alt H9, get rid of the zeros, and we've got that. Now look, it's sorted in alphabetical order, which I do not appreciate, so I'm gonna come here, more sort options, descending by volume, okay. All right, before I get too lost in Never Never Land, I want you to know that um, I'm, I'm just, I'm being very fluid right now. I'm, I'm not even curious yet. I'm just kind of going through motions that feel like, hey, I want to see if I have the information to answer the question. And then once I get to that point where I feel like, yeah, I can kind of sort of answer the question, then I'm going to go a little deeper. That's where the fun's going to begin. So just bear with me for a second while I kind of just get things situated. That's really all I'm doing right now. 
Now notice these little plus marks so you can hit plus and see then it goes to Q1, Q2. This is the kind of formatting crap that I'm like, yeah, I, this isn't cool. I could rename these each one, but why? I've already done it over here. So again, when I get to the point where I'm creating a presentation layer, I will be using these because that's how I want it to be presented. But for right now, we got this. So boom, look at that. We've got full year 2020. I don't know if I need these totals necessarily. So I'm gonna click in here, go pivot table, analyze, no, design. I want my subtotals. I do not want to show subtotals. And then I want to, what do I want to do? We have this in order, this in order. I don't want my grand total either. I don't like that design grand totals. I want them on for columns only. Got it, okay. If I were a brand new analyst and I didn't have a good role model or I didn't really know what I was doing and I had this request, I might take this pivot table and send it back to my manager and go, here you go. Here is volume by region by quarter. And I might actually feel good about myself because I included other quarterly information. If I'm feeling super fancy, I might even do something like, hey, let's go pivot table analyze. I wanna throw in a pivot chart. Uh, this one looks like, maybe that'll work. Nah, let's do a line graph. Go okay, that's not gonna work. So let's go ahead, design, switch rows and columns. There we go. Cool beans and feel like super fancy and then send this off to them. Don't do that. Do not do that, okay? This is lazy. This is, um, this is, again, I would say that this is something that somebody who's pretty new would do because they, they go back to this question, right? And they say, hey, I just wanna know how did Q2 volume by region look? They wanna know if everything's looking good. And so you do this and you go, sweet, I made a pivot table. You can see by region and by quarter, I've got this cool graph. They can see and then they can answer the question themselves. That's effectively what you're doing is you're telling them, hey, how about you go ahead and do the job that you just asked me, right? So what did the analyst actually do? You pushed a couple buttons, you made a little chart, and you just send it back to them. You didn't, you didn't use this thing right here. That is what analytics is. Analytics exists up here. It's not here in the tool set. It's what's going on up here. I haven't added any value yet, right? This isn't value added. This is more just giving exposure that is open to interpretation. And so I would I would strongly encourage you if you ever get to a point very quickly in an analysis process where you're like, well, I think I've given them the information needed to make an answer or get an answer, um, stop, take a step back, look at it, and let your curiosity take over, right? So that's what we've done. We've gotten to a point now where we can be a little bit curious and go, okay, what is this showing us? Is this showing us anything? I don't know. Um, what do we have? We've got, looks like Q1, obviously North America is huge um, because it's so large. These lines are pretty muted. They look fairly flat, but there is an upward slope. Looks like Q3. Um, it appears that we've got seasonality. Um, again, if I don't, if I'm new to the company, maybe I don't know this stuff, but you could definitely ask somebody, say, hey, do we have seasonality going on in our organization? Because that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that we basically grow from Q3 up to Q2, and then what we should expect is a correction, or not a correction, but like a slow season coming in Q3, and then we'll pick back up in Q4, and then just kind of keep going up from there. That's what I'm seeing. Now, if I wanted to, I could take this and actually right click on the pivot table. I wanna expand entire field. What that does is adds the months, now so we get a little bit more granularity make this a little bigger so we can see um again i you know, this is just kind of like a wall of numbers it's a small wall but still it's always good to have a little bit of a visual to look at so now this lays everything out by month we can see yep north america is actually making it a little bit tricky so i'm going to take nam off for a second 
Okay, there we go. So you see, when we did that, it brings up the 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 axis points over there, so that we can magnify a little bit more of the the ups and downs. You can see them. It, it this looks seasonal, right? Every region's behaving the same, um, and uh, we can see LATAM is low. Eight pack. There's not a whole lot. There's not a whole lot exciting. Um, Okay, I've got I've got questions. I've got things that I want to dig into. Add back in Nam. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. That's good. That's helpful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this pivot table. Copy. I'm gonna come down here, paste it. When you copy a pivot table, it's gonna just take everything that was in the original pivot table and it's gonna drop it down again. So now I'm going to. Uh, what do I want to do? I actually want to switch rows and columns again I'm gonna get my years my quarters get rid of my dates and I'm gonna put my region name back down here and I want to start doing a little bit of variance analysis now I want to see how year over year we've kind of been performing right so this is helpful just from an optical perspective but it's it's hard because you know this peak looks very similar to this peak and if we we go ahead and collapse back to the quarters because that's that's going to be what we want to see i'm going to go ahead and expand collapse collapse entire field back to quarters it you can see this one kind of kisses the line there this one it's a little lower so you can tell there's year over year growth this one it's harder to tell um, without hovering one six seven three Six seven three yeah okay. yeah so I, I just want to make this easier right so how am I going to do that I'm going to go uh, Q two Q one actually year over year uh, we're going to go X paste we're going to go number and percentage then we're going to come over here we're going to go Q two year over year number and percentage. And I'm just going to do some quick calculations. Now, something you should be aware of when you're doing calculations in a pivot table, uh, if you reference a pivot table, look at that. This is what it does is it gets to the get pivot uh, syntax. So what that means is it's going to say, hey, this is our, our pivot table that is looking at volume, right? And it, the pivot table starts in A38. And uh, that cell that I'm currently selecting is the North America Q2 2021 reference I can hit enter and it's going to give me that but if I were to copy that and drag it down it's going to be the same number right because those things are basically hard coded in if I wanted to uh, go like Nam EMEA and then say like QTR1 Q TR2. I am going off on a little tangent right now. I just want to show you how this works. So region name, if I overwrite this with this and I lock my column and then I overwrite my quarter. Oh, no, that's it just needs to be a one. I'll, I'll fix this in a second. And then year is going to be this want the row uh, again bear with me I'm going off on, on, a, on a slight tangent here okay so I need to change this actually to uh, one and this one to be 2021 did I do it wrong f2 uh, I 30 I got these backwards ah what have I done bring that up bring that down enter okay so NAM Q1 is this amount, and I copy this and bring it down, paste, Q1, Q2, 20, 21. All of that <laughs> to show you how to reference cells within a pivot table, okay? Uh, when you have the get pivot syntax. So you can use get pivot syntax to actually do some pretty cool things. You could have like a drop down menus and make it really easy, really cool, uh, interactive. Or, or you could just go equals G41 and it's gonna give you that, okay? I'm gonna do that for right now. I don't wanna mess around with, 
with all this stuff. So let's actually get rid of all the crap that I just did. Okay, back to what I was doing. What is the year over year variance for Q1? It's gonna be equals F41 minus B41. Enter, 20,000 units. Now, for a percentage variance, there's several ways that you can calculate this. The one that I tend to use is goes equals um, F41 divided by B41 minus one. That's gonna get you the growth. I'm gonna go Alt HP. Alt H zero so that we can have more visibility to the percentages. Now I'm gonna copy this and drag it down. That's gonna give us our Q1 year over year variance for the first quarter, right? So 2021 in the aggregate was 4% greater than Q1 of 2020. Now let's do the same thing for Q2. And I just copied those formulas and pasted them here. I'm gonna drag the references now to the right place, enter, and then same thing here, drag the references to the right place, enter. Okay, we can see that there's a little bit less. All I'm doing here is control C, control V, um, copy paste for that. Now we can see that we were 2.7% year over year growth in Q2. So there was a slowdown. This is standing out as a big, a big bogey. Obviously we had 9% growth in lat am in q1 and that was zero percent in q2 um nam i mean this is a little over half a percent emia is slow and steady 1.6 percent 4.3 versus 2.3 so a little bit in apac now we can do so, there's so many things that we can do here right this is getting me all all giddy getting me all giddy uh what we could do is actually forecast based on that uh, the the q1 year over year growth what we think q2 might have been based on what year over year you know stats are so what i mean by that is if i go okay equals q2 was c41 of last year so if we had 576,000 in q2 of last year and in q1 we had four percent growth Basically, we just have to apply our 4% growth rate if we're assuming that we're going to continue at that growth rate to Q2, and then that would give us a forecast. So if I do that, I go this, I'm actually going to go divided by parenthesis uh, 1 minus this. Yep. So all that does is basically say, hey, if that it, if it's a 4% growth rate, it's the same as uh, saying, well, that represented 96% roughly of what it should have been. So divided by 96%, it'll make it up to a whole if you're following. Okay. So I would have forecast based on Q1 performance that we would have hit 600,000, okay? But we actually hit 596. So what were we actually off from that forecast? What is the value difference of our percentage miss? So that minus G41, we were off by 4,400 here. So copy, I'm gonna bring this down, paste, uh, all HK, all H9, all H9. So in the aggregate, our decline in year over year growth from Q1 to Q2 represented about 14,000 units. You can see, I'm gonna do some math here, equals this divided by down here, F4, enter. Again, I, I'm, I'm just gonna say all the HP. All, all of this jumping, moving around, all this kind of stuff, that was in the first video where I talked about navigational tips and tricks. So I'm doing things like uh, control up, down, up, down, left, right, right, and then control page down, page up, go in tabs up and down. That's all I'm doing. So if it looks like I'm moving fast, uh, I mean, I, I am, but it's also just Holding down control and going up, down, up, down. It's, it's, whoa, I got lost. Okay. Go back down. Calming down. Calming down. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to bring it down here. Paste. So you can see uh, 56, almost 60% of our variance came from Lat Am, which is our smallest region. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Um, and then we've got 30% of our variance came from Nam. It's our biggest region. Um, Curious equals this divided by this um, F4 all HP copy 
paste. I'm gonna actually grab all of this, control X, that's cut, control B just to move it so that all my formulas stay intact. I'm gonna control X, control V, I'm gonna go Alt H A L. That's gonna bring my, my percentages to be left aligned. I like as a best practice just for optical purposes to make percentages often be left aligned next to the number that they're um, actually referencing. So Alt H A L, left align. Okay, so what I just did really quick, this is my Q2 forecast. This is just using one super duper easy method. Um, that's it's just taking our trended, uh, if you can even call it a trend, our year to date Q1, year over year growth and applying that to last year Q2 to get an anticipated Q2. So like at the end of Q1, we would have projected some sort of forecast like this, barring any other substantial changes that we knew about, right? So that's just a plain vanilla forecasting method. So what we see is that um, our forecast would have had North America representing 60% of our volume, 18% from EMEA, 11% from APAC, and 9% uh, from LATAM. Yet, our variances to forecast were 31% from NAM, so uh, about half what, if it was an equal distribution, an equal miss, half what it would have been. Um, we were dead on for EMEA, they're super boring, nothing exciting there. APAC, 16% uh, versus this, so it's kind of equitable, like we'd expect to miss about that neighborhood. LATAM is the anomaly, this is just crazy, so it makes up for everybody. 56% of our variance to our hypothetical forecast came from LATAM. So we know we need to take a look at the LATAM and see what's going on, okay? Um, there's other ways that we could be, you know, forecasting stuff. We could look at, um, I, I don't I don't know that I need to get into too many more forecasting methods. That, that could be a whole video in and of itself. Maybe it will be. Put in the comments if you're interested in a forecasting video, okay? Moving fast, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this pivot table now, just for fun, I'm gonna bring it down here. So here's where I am in the thought process, right? We've looked at our trend, we've looked at it by month, by quarter, by region, we've got a sense for where we're at, year over year, what we're seeing, we've got a little bit of optical trending, nothing looks too crazy, we see that there's seasonality, uh, but we have questions now, because it's not enough just to say that, yep, Q2 was up 2.7% year over year versus prior year. That was down from Q1 uh, where we were up 4%. You know what that's called? Elevator analysis, where you're basically reciting numbers and saying this was up and this was down. No explanation for why, not even an attempt. That is a horribly common thing that happens, particularly for new analysts that don't necessarily know better they haven't been modeled the right way to do things. So um, if you're ever tempted to basically recite back results, resist. Resist the temptation to just simply regurgitate stuff. Look for the quality, okay? If you find yourself just saying this was up, this was down, yada, 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 you know, second guess, second guess. It's always good, okay? So what I'm doing, uh, basically we've got our, our point. I wanna look at this. I wanna see what's going on here. If we can figure out what that's all about. And then I want to look at, you know, maybe this, these things, right? If we can explain, um, what is this, 87% of our variance, I'm going to feel okay. I have a sense that uh, between these two, it's going to be a, or these two, it's going to be a similar answer. Um, I don't know that for sure, but this one definitely has got something going on. So what I wanted to do is create this pivot table copy. I want to add in our client IDs to our regions. The reason I wanted to do that is because now I want to see exactly this kind of crap that I'm seeing. Okay, look, there's gaps. There are gaps. Okay, so as a reminder, this is a pivot table. We've got our 2020 Q1 through Q4, 2021 Q1 and 2, North America, our clients. Um, uh, this is not ordered the way that I'd like it. I'm going to go ahead and right click here, sort more sort options descending by volume okay boom beautiful okay that helps so our our big clients are on the top and then they get down they taper down so we picked up uh and if you're you're wondering why 
uh, this guy is on the bottom, even though they've got the most here, it's because it, it does the ranking in accordance with like the total volume, um, sum of volume. So like in the aggregate, this nine eight is I hope is it greater than this? it's not. Oh no, it is. It is the lowest. I'm sorry, I was thinking about that wrong. So this is like eleven thousand, but this is nine thousand. So even though this number is greater than all of these numbers, um, it's still on the bottom because in the aggregate, it's that low. So anyway, I, that may be stating the obvious. Okay, just as a quick hit list item, we've made the determination based on consistent growth, nailing the forecast, that EMEA is boring, okay? That there's not a real story there. So I'm gonna look here and look at that. We've basically confirmed what we just said. Every client who has been active during the measurement period has been active. I don't see any wild swings in numbers. You're looking year over year. Um, man, there's, this isn't where the story is. Nothing is, there's no smoking gun here. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna say ignore EMEA, but I'm gonna ignore EMEA. I don't, I don't really care. Um, APAC, what do we got here? We got a new client. Looks like they came on board in Q3. Um, I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna go uh, from right here. I'm gonna go Alt uh, W F F freeze panes just so that as I'm scrolling, I can get my quarters up there. And I will hopefully not forget to do undo that because obviously I've got it locked at row 53. Okay. But I'm sorry, I'm, I shouldn't be skipping NAM like this. So NAM, we've got this new client that came on in Q4. They're decent sized, so that's good. Um, which is curious why our growth, if we've picked up, so we picked up a client here. We picked it up in Q2. They weren't there. And then we had this here. So we've picked up two clients. So the reason I'm going a little bit quiet, I'm gonna go ahead and add back subtotals for this particular guy. I'm gonna go subtotals, show subtotals at top of group. I sometimes like to do top of group. Um, so I wanted to see that just because I wanted to see, this is 596 and we would have projected 600,000, it was 576, so we're up 30, uh, 20,000 year over year. Um, we've got a new client. This guy was pretty big. See, now, now you get to see me, you see the, the gears turning. I'm trying to figure out why. I'm already gonna undo my freeze. Alt W F F, unfreeze. I'm gonna come back up here. So it came in, we have more clients and less volume. Okay, we've got two more clients. I'm gonna do something else. Check this out. Check this out. I realize what I wanna do here. Um, I don't, go away. Pivot table, analyze, design, subtotals, grand totals. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so within here, I wanna go report layout, show in tabular form, and then I wanna go report layout, repeat item labels. So you see what that just did? That applied 2020 to the top to each uh, respective column, and then it applied NAM to its own column here in each respective row. Now, if I wanted to do calculations like sum ifs or count ifs or things like that, which I'm gonna do, uh, it would uh, be easier to pick up. So I'm gonna actually come down here. I'm gonna go NAM, APAC, uh, EMEA, uh, APAC, nope, LATAM, total, and we're gonna actually, Control X, Control V. I'm gonna do a count ifs. And I wanna count the active clients for a quarter. So I'm gonna go equals count ifs. And my criteria range is going to be up to the top of here. And I'm going to hit F4, F4, so that my rows are absolute references. And that means that my rows, no matter if I drag my formula, aren't gonna move, they're gonna stay stagnant. But my columns are relative references, so they will go wherever my formula goes. 
Um, and so that's, I'm counting there, but I wanna count the criteria is that it is greater than zero. So quote greater than zero comma. And then I wanna count where this F4, I want that range reference to be all absolute because I don't want it to move, um, but I want it to find the criteria, which is my new little columns here in F4, F4, F4. I want my column to stay stagnant because um, I want it to, as I drag my formula, I don't want that reference to move, but I want it to go down. So the, the rows are relative, the columns are absolute, and I'm gonna close parentheses. And what this shows me is that if this formula is correct, I have 18 active clients in the second, in the first quarter of 2020. So by highlighting this, you can see down at the bottom, we've got 18. You can see here it's 18. My formula said 18. That looks like it's working. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and grab my, this guy, nope, I'm gonna grab this. Do, 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 do copy, paste, alt ESV, paste values. How do I do that? I don't like that at all. Um, <sighs> ah, whatever, it's fine. Woo, control Y, control Z. Oh dear God, what have I done? Control Y, control Y, control Y, control Y. Okay, bring it back, bring it back. Control C, copy, and I'm gonna bring this over here. Control V, uh, I don't care about this total. I'm gonna delete that and I'm actually gonna highlight that. Control X to cut it and then bring it over. Control paste, um, I, no, I'm gonna undo that. So that's fine. Uh, what I actually want is now to do a sum. Copy and bring it over, Control V. Get rid of that. Okay. So according to this, at the at its peak in Q4 and Q1, we had 53 clients. Now, if you remember, we go control page down, page down to our geo data. We had 53 clients in our list. So that's the most clients that we've had. And we they were all active during this time period. In Q2, we had 50 that were active, according to this. And in Q2 of last year, we also had 50. Um, so I'm gonna do some variances off of this, just quick and dirty, um, equals this Q2 minus Q2 of last year. Copy, bring it down, paste, okay. So net, net neutral, we appear to have lost a client here, year over year, and we gained a client in NAM just from Q2 alone, okay? Uh, when you do a formula like this, I only spot checked this one. That's not prudent. You should always double check a couple of instances. So I'm gonna count here in EMEA for Q2. We had 13 and Q2, 13. I'm gonna check one more. Uh, let's check here, LATAM, nine and nine. Now, the reason I wanted to emphasize that is because the surest way to lose trust or make a lot of your work go, not really to waste, but just be um, problematic, is that you can have the most beautiful report or analysis or whatever put together and you present it. If somebody sees something in it and they catch an error, the whole thing is suspect. That's just human nature, okay? Uh, it, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's the case. So if we were to have gone through this process and maybe there was a formula error and some of our numbers are jacked up, and we come to some conclusions that don't make sense, or even if we didn't, if we came to the right conclusions, but the number's still wrong, people are gonna still think that the whole thing is jacked up if they spot an error. Better you catch it before you publish than anybody else. So QA your work is one of the hardest disciplines to pick up, but oh my gosh, all it takes is a couple of public shamings to realize that, holy cow, the, the social equity or whatever you wanna call it, that you lose when that happens and then suddenly you're branded as somebody who creates unreliable work that's really hard to overcome so i would encourage you to always check your work as frequently as you can especially when you do formulas even if they're not complex like this you could have an error somewhere right check it 
make sure it makes sense and we feel good about this. And so we at least see what's going on here with the clients. We have our counts. Um, I wanted to sh just while we're here, uh, I don't, even though this is chicken scratch, this isn't what we're going to be presenting. I still want to go like this. I want to go Alt H B P. I want to add, you know, this top line. I want to go highlight this control B bold. I want to go uh, Alt H six to make an indent here. And then if I wanted these things to be bold as well, control B down here, control B. I want to show you if you wanted to apply this format over here, you could highlight it, go format painter and do this, right? Actually, I did that wrong. Uh, uh, highlight this format painter and then format paint. You saw how easily that got jacked up, but um, you, you have to do specifically where you did it. Or I could go here, control C, come over here, go alt E S T. That's going to paint your formats. What a lot of people don't realize is that when you copy something, you're copying more than just the contents. You're copying the formulas, you're copying the formats, you're copying the text, you're copying the values, you're copying all this stuff, right? So um, if, if for example, I had like nothing, here, well, I, I don't know how far I wanna push it, but I could paste values, I could paste formats, I could paste formulas, I could do all of those things independent of one another. So if you've got a format that you like and you don't wanna reach up and grab the format painter, all you have to do is copy and then paste formats and bada bing, you're in business, okay? All right, that's enough of that, okay. So this is interesting. I, I said that I wanted to look at LATAM and I'm looking at LATAM and here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that we lost two clients in Q2 of this year even though year over year we lost one right because we had ah okay so this is interesting this client right here showed up in q3 of last year so their value was not baked into q2 but their value was baked into q1 and they're a decent size like they're the third biggest volume for LATAM in Q1, look at that. And then they disappeared, they're gone. So they show up somewhere mid Q3, do volume, do volume, and they're gone. Now, depending on your company, depending on the size of your company, depending on your industry, whether you have account executives or people who are on top of things, they may or may not know about that. You may be informing them of something that they're not aware of, but I see it that's a that's a big story we've just lost a massive client in q2 that's a story right that's a big piece of it so if we look if you think okay well if it was 4800 in q1 and our q1 growth was actually um nine percent year over year holy cow that number right if you were to apply that growth um into q2 can we do that we can't do that. See, you're catching me. You're catching me slipping. Well, okay, here, so here's what we can do. We can say, mm, I don't wanna say that either. I don't wanna say that either. I acknowledge that you know there's, there's sort of this element of rate and volume going on that I'm not getting too far into where you've got, if you wanna think of rate in terms of volume per client per month and then you think of um volume as just actual uh, actual number of clients in a, in, a, in a way uh there's elements of that that you really should be digging into to see like what was driving what um so i'm gonna do some very very loose math here and i'm gonna go equals this might not be a good idea B41 divided by this guy. So this is gonna get me an average volume per active customer during the quarter. I acknowledge that customers may have been active in only one or two months of a quarter or all three. Um, so this isn't like a great proxy, but it's good to at least see all the H9, all the H9. Copy, we can only drag that over here. Paste, I'm gonna grab this, copy. 
paste, control V, I want to grab this, copy, bring it here. And I need to grab this reference and drag it over here because that guy's there. Copy, bring it down, paste, copy, paste. Okay. So we see our, yep, okay. So Q2, I'm gonna actually cut, control X, control V. Our, our volume per customer is down. And it's down this over this minus one down one and a half percent, alt HP, alt H zero, copy, paste. <laughs> Interesting. So volume per customer in Q2 for LATAM is actually up 11%, yet they still sucked. They still managed a big goose egg in spite of the volume per unit because they lost customers. So when you lose 10% of your client base, uh, it doesn't matter that you're up. It's going to be more than offset by that downside. So um, this is where this, okay, our story is starting to take shape. So we're I'm, I'm narrating what I'm doing and it's starting to turn into like an actual story, right? So um, we see that this is a big freaking piece of it. We lost this and we lost this. This guy was doing 1800 last year. So you add this, you know, maybe plus a little bit for for volume. Um, they should have been up, but let's just be conservative and say we lost 5,000 here and 1800. That's almost 7,000 that we lost in those two customers, right? Because this one went away and then this one went away almost 7,000. So what did we say that the driver was or what did we say that we were off? 8,000, okay? Two customers drove about 50% of our variance. Boom, right there. That's huge, okay? Two customers uh, left region in Q2. So now I'm starting to just write some notes. Okay, two customers left region in Q2, uh, taking about 7K in volume away. So that's 50% of our volume. The rest of this is gonna be, it's not same source sales. Yeah. So for those who were active equals I-99, no, yes, uh, divided by D-99 minus one, so up 2.7%, oh man, yeah. See, I mean, it's, these guys were only up. So what happened here? Okay, I, this is something that I should caveat. You know, I got all excited when I saw this number. And it's still true, but something that you should be aware of is that taking averages of averages or doing, you know, thing, anytime where you compound an average situation, uh, you're playing with fire because numbers can do weird stuff. And someone who's smart is going to look and pick up on something and say, hey, those things don't add up. And you're going to scramble. So be careful if you're doing something like that. I'm not saying don't do it. There is value sometimes in looking at it. But be careful when you're putting those sorts of things out there. You... I've heard analysis uh, or findings being described as like, you know, you're, you're giving someone rope, right? And you just want to make sure that you don't give them so much rope that you tie yourself up in it, right? You want to give them just enough rope to get them where they need to go. And that's what I think we need to do. So in that instance, I kind of want to just forget that I even did that math, say, this is cool, but I acknowledge that there are shortcomings. And the reality is uh, we've got these two, the biggest orgs in this region, that represent 64,000 out of 82,000 had sluggish growth, okay? That, that's it, I mean, that's all. So when you've got, man, this is a, this is a volume, this is a volume story by region, um, a, a, a same store volume region story coupled with 
two big customers going away. APAC also had a customer go away, but they were very small. So that probably compounded any same store sales issues. I'm gonna actually copy this formula, copy and like bring it up here. We've got a similar situation. Yeah, look, less than 1% growth. I mean, that's, that's it. These guys are, the big guys aren't growing here. 1.3, 3 3%, I mean, that's pretty good. So that's why EMEA didn't have any issues. You've got some, this guy actually went down, but it was more than offset by this guy, who's one of the larger clients that was up by 3%. I'm gonna you know, copy this formula and paste it like here to see if NAM is doing the same thing. 3%, 1.5%, 3%. So expecting this 4% when your largest clients are only adding 3% uh, year over year, uh, same store sales growth, that's what happens, okay? So I feel like we've got a story here. We've got our story. This is down by 0.6% because same store, set, they're just buying less in Q2 than we would have expected. They're still growing. So I think that's the punchline, right? So we've got Q2 year over year growth slowed from Q1 growth of 4% down to 2.7% primarily driven by okay so OHW I said no elevator analysis this is not analysis this is a summary this is a punchline you still need to tell them what happened right so Q2 growth slowed from Q1 growth of 4% down to 2.7% primarily driven by okay so this alone this 7,000 unit uh, decline took I mean if if that's 50% of the D the the decline, uh, you could say that effectively 1.3, so we've got almost 0.7%, so 0.7% um, or 7K volume decline from loss of two uh, customers in LATAM, driving uh, overall growth for region, down from 9% in Q1 to zero to flat in Q2 year over over year. Now, when I'm doing this stuff, heh, it doesn't like that, so I'm gonna hit. Um, it. If you start something with like an equals or a parentheses or a plus or something like that, it's gonna assume that it's a formula. It's not, you just put a, an apostrophe, it'll take text. So Alt-H-W, okay, so that's the big, that's the punchline. That's what we want to say, like, boom, this is what's going on, okay? That's something that needs to be uh, made visible and needs to be talked about, and everybody needs to understand that, hey, we lost a couple of clients here. Um, other than that, same store sales. And look, this is this is absolutely chicken scratch. The next video is where we're going to be putting together our package. So it's going to be the presentation layer. So don't worry about this. If you've got stream of consciousness things that you just need to get down, get them down. Your chicken scratch is your chicken scratch. And as long as it's coherent, somewhat organized, and you can piece it back together, that's great. Um, if you've got people who like to see your work, then you may have to make certain accommodations or put things together in a way that that is better for them. But for my purposes here, uh, I'm just trying to get out of my head the stuff that we just talked about so that we can be ready when we're uh, putting together our presentation. So, okay, so same store sales. You know, I could... This is really annoying me. I'm gonna go with HW, just get rid of all of those. And I wanna do something where, so I'm gonna use a sum ifs real quick. I think this is gonna work. I'm gonna go equals, ooh, wait, 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 wait. No. Uh, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go equals some ifs. I want to sum this. I'm going to go F4, F4, where I want the region. I'm going to populate that, F4 lock that. And uh, it's gonna be over here, F4, 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 comma, 
and I want, I'll tell you what I'm doing while I'm doing this. I, I want some same store sales. So any client that was active in both quarters, I wanna see how they were in this quarter and that quarter. So uh, F4. And I want it to be if it's greater than zero. Okay. And I know this is this. So I'm going to grab this, copy, paste. And I want this to go. Um, no, that's right. Copy, bring it down, paste this, control that. So we had clients who were active here. Let me copy this, bring it over here. I don't know. This isn't going to work. Or is it? Uh, no, that's just gonna give me the total. Um, I actually want where is it the inverse? I'm making myself think here. <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Um, uh, wait, 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 wait. So I want to sum this guy where this guy is that so maybe this is it mm -hmm. equals this over this minus one 2.6 percent copy bring this formula down paste copy this bring this down paste so okay that's this is this is kind of our, our story is it is that the same thing? Five nine two, five seven six. Did I break something? Five seven six six one eight. Five seven six six one eight. Five seven six five nine two. No, that's right. That's right. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is isolate specific clients who are active in both quarters and say, if the, that person was active in both quarters, then I want to know how much they did in Q1 of 2021 and Q1 or Q2 of 2021 and Q2 of 2020. The reason I want to do this is because I want to see how same store sales changed year over year. Uh, and that is going to basically isolate out anything that was new, new sales, new store sales. Um, <laughs> I could just go, uh, it's that. <laughs> this is because these guys were all active, right? And that is the number that I had. So basically 4,000, uh, man, I'm being silly. So if, if you've got a lot more client activity and uh, a lot more volatility, then a formula like this makes sense. Uh, this is correct. I did it correctly, but we could have just as easily looked at this and said, oh, well, new sales represented... 4,000 out of this and everything else was that and then we could have summed and done the, the difference but whatever so uh, these are it that was a rabbit hole we probably didn't need to go down uh, it was effectively validating that same store sales slower slower than expected in Q2 versus Q1 year over year uh, comprising majority of remaining variants. Okay, so I mean, this this is kind of it. We've got it down to like two bullets, right? So basically, yes, here's the punchline. And before I, I deliver, I'm gonna go back to the email. They just wanna see Q2 2021 volume by region and wanted to know if everything was looking good. Okay, so our answer to them is effectively gonna be look, Q2 grew at 2.7% year over year. Uh, and it was mostly made up of 3.4% in NAM, 1.6% in APAC, 2.3% in, I'm sorry, 1.6% in EMEA, 2.3% in APAC, no growth in LATAM, so a net 2.7%. Uh, the same store sales in North America were down year over year uh, q1 had growth of uh, in in the aggregate of four percent so uh oh man i'm <laughs> this is this is gonna be great for television um 
no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to articulate the story, even though I've got the, the bullets here. I'm trying to think through how I would sort of like really deliver this in a quick and punchy way because the, the, the situation is, yeah, we grew year over year for the quarter. It was slower growth than in Q1. That slowdown was driven primarily by Latin America, where whatever percent of the growth, seven out of eight equals seven divided by eight, alt HP. 88%, 90% of the, the delta in Latin America was because two clients disappeared, which is actually 50% of the down downside for um, just overall for the quarter. So that's huge. And then the rest of it is just same store sales were down in the other in North America and APAC. That's the punchline, okay? What that's gonna do is it's not gonna open Pandora's box, but it good data drives good questions good questions drive better data so we started out with this one little data set right we started out with this little crappy rinky dink two data sets that we had to piece together clean up wrangle and then put in this and then we're looking at it so what happens is we're going to present this and go hey did you know that we lost two big clients in latam and by the way same store sales are down off of q1 um, we may need to take a longer look back and see hey is our our historical trend real is the seasonality that we saw reasonable is that a recent thing is the slowdown something that we should have expected have we seen it before by the way what are our account executives seeing what's going out on out on the street you know is that sort of a decline something that we should be worried about materially it's not a lot we're not talking about like huge dips okay it's just a little bit but we want to make sure we want to be um, you know, prudent in our, our analysis and unbiased and just bring these things to light so that the right people have the right information, they can have the right conversations and what that's going to ultimately lead to is feeding the machine. They're going to probably come back to us and go like, hey, by the way, what, who, who were those clients? Who was their account exec? You know, we're going to have to look into that sort of thing and it just, it's, it's going to go. It's going to take off from there. It's going to take on a life of its own and the next thing you know, they're going to come back and go, hey, by the way, that cool report that you did, can you do that again? That's money, okay? So anyway, uh, with that, this was our completely unstructured uh, analysis of the volume by region data. Oh my goodness, I haven't saved in a while, so I'm gonna go Control S. We have saved our version two. Now, if, uh, if you're ready for it, in the next video, we are gonna be taking all of this swaggy napkin math, all of our chicken scratch, and we're gonna turn it into something beautiful, ready to present to our stakeholders, and deliver that punchline in a way that's memorable, catchy, they look at it, they know what's going on, they have a good status, and it gets their wheels turning so that they have better ideas for the types of things that they're gonna want us to do, and that's gonna feed more work, more analysis, more fun stuff to do, and you're gonna see all of it in the next video. So for now, that's it for now on this one right here, and uh, as per usual, thanks for watching.